स्मरामि हृदय संस्फुरदात्मतत्व सच्चित सुखम परमहम सगतिम तुरीयम यसो प्रजागर सुषुप्तिमवेति नित्यम ब्रह्मनिष्कलमहम न च भूतरंगः प्रातर्भजामि मनसा वजसामगम्यम् वाचो विभांति निखिलायदानुग्रहेना यन्नेति नेति वचनायर निगमा अवोचु तम देव देव मजमचुतमाहुरत्रिम प्रातर नमामि तमस्तक परमर्कवर्णम पूर्णम सनातन पदम पुरुषोत्तमाक्यम यस्मिन् निदम जगदशे शमशे शबूर्तो रज्जाम भुजंगम इव प्रतिभासितम् वै Slokatridam punyam, lokatraya vibhushanam, pratakale pathe vyastu, sagacche paramam, sagacche paramam padam. गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वरः गुरु साक्षात् परम ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः ओम सदा शिव समारंभाम शंकर आचार्य मध्यमाम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यंदाम वंदे गुरु परंपराम दिस इस अवर सेवेंथ सेशन ऑफ प्रादस मरणास्तोत्रम and so far we have discussed uh, up to the half of uh, third shloka in the first shloka it was uh, remembering and in the second shloka it was uh, praising and the third shloka it is prostrating. These are actions of uh, inner instruments, then words, then physical body. So in the first instance, we meditated on the ultimate reality, which is uh, manifested as myself. And in the second shloka, we praised that reality. And now in this third shloka, with the physical body, we are, we are prostrating. So, 
first the subtlest form and with that inner activity we praised and taking those both with us we are we are prostrating now in this uh, third shloka so this shloka is pratar namami tamasaha paramarka varna i am prostrating what i am prostrating tamasaha param that which is above all darkness which is of the form of uh, a fulgence and that is uh, arka varna of the form of uh, the sun the most effulgent one which is giving effulgence to the whole world and uh, in our last just in length about the implications of uh, that word arka varna so i am not going to repeat that and which is uh, purnam full without any limitation limitations of uh, time space and causation so <laughs> purushottam akya having the name purushottama purushottama is paramatma as explained in bhagavad gita uttama purushas tu anya paramatme ti udahrita uttama purushas tu anya about the perishable and the imperishable that is uh, about what is uh, manifested as the gross universe and even above the subtle cause of this universe that is kshara and akshara kshara is perishable akshara is imperishable so what is above both this what is above the the realm of uh, cause and effect that is uttama purusha purushottama so that purushottama i am prostrating i am contemplating and i am praising so next is yasmin idam jagad ashesham ashesha murtau yasmin ashesha murtau idam jagad ashesham pratibhasitam idam jagad this jagat the meaning of exact meaning of jagat is that which is moving gachadi idi jagat that which is moving and what is meant by this movement we can uh, see in uh, two two ways one the whole whole world right from my newest atom to the grossest universe everything is moving incessantly moving even the subatomic particles they are moving always and from that level to the grossest universal level everything all objects everything is all are moving so this world is jagat and in another way we can explain 
the word jagat as uh, uh, always moving in the form of uh, uh, jayate, asti, vardhade, viparinamate, apakshiyate, nashyate. That is having birth, having existence, having growth, that is growing, and uh, many, many changes are occurring, and uh, slowly decaying, and dying. So from birth to death, so many faces are there through which we are, we are passing through. And this uh, passing through many, many faces, that is, uh, that is the movement. That is the movement of the, of, the, of the world, of the universe. So this universe can be called uh, as Jagat, that which is moving. That which is always moving. So, Ashesham. Ashesham means, uh, Shesham is what remains. That, what is remaining is Shesham. Ashesham means fully, in full, without any remnant parts. So, this Jagad Ashesham, the whole universe, the whole universe, that is Yasmin Asesha Murtau, Yasmin in which Asesha Murtau, that embodiment which is of the nature of fullness. So, when we connect this sentence, it would mean in that fullness, this world is, uh, this world is Pratibhasitam, is being manifested. So, this world with all its uh, varieties, all its movements, this universal phenomena is resting on or is existing on that which is full, Ashesha Murti. The whole world the whole universal phenomena that is existing or that is being manifested in that fullness. See, when the substratum or the final cause is Ashesha, full, without any part, without some remains, that is full. How something else can be uh, manifested from that? The answer is well given in uh, one of the Shanti Mantras of uh, Ajurveda, that is Purnasya, Purnam Adaya, Purnam Eva Avashishyate. When we take, take away that fullness from the full, what remains, it's also full. So no harm we can do, we can give to that substratum which is full by nature, full by itself. 
that is having no limitation of uh, uh, time, space, or causation. So in that fullness, the whole universal phenomena is manifested. See, when something is manifested from something else, there will be two objects. One, that which is the cause, and second, the effect. So the cause and the effect are there. If such cause and effect are there, it won't be it won't be full. It cannot be full. So here it is full. Both the cause and effect, both are full. How it can be? Then we will realize what we call manifestation or personification. That is uh, just, just a sort of uh, superimposition. It is not real. Really, this world is not at all manifesting from something else. The cause is Purna and the effect is a Purna. No, we cannot say. And effect is Purna and the cause is a Purna. That cannot, that cannot also be spoken of. Then what is happening? It is said here, Pradibhasidam Vai. It is being manifested. And this manifestation is not something coming out of uh, something else. It is not the manifestation of the Jagat from that final cause which we call Brahman. And there are two entities. One is the cause and the other is the effect. No, we cannot say so. If it is so, it, it will not be Purnam, full. So what is the, what is the type of uh, manifestation here? It is only a case of superimposition. Therefore, it is said here, Rajuam Bhujanga Maiva. Rajuam Bhujanga Maiva. This is not a, not a physical manifestation. Differentiating the cause and the effect. No. Such manifestation is not there. But here it is only a case of superimposition. So it is said, Rajuam Bhujanga Maiva. Raju means a rop. Rajuam in a rop. Bhujangama. Bhujangama is snake. I was a student of Vedanta. Even in the very, very first or second session itself. Well, of course, hear this simile, this example of rope and snake. So when Ajarya starts uttering Ra, then itself the student will realize he is going to explain that. So his narration is that. Still, Acharyas are again and again repeating the same simile. Why? Because it is easier to digest. It conveys the real message. What is superimposition? 
So when there is no ample life, light, and uh, let us use a common language that is darkness is spreading. Darkness cannot spread. On the other hand, light can spread. Still in the common language, we, uh, we use like this. Darkness is spreading. There is no enough uh, light to differentiate objects. So in such darkness, when we see a piece of rock, we may mistake it as a, a snake. Or uh, it may happen the vice versa also. Actually, it may be a snake. We may think it is a rope, a piece of rope. That can also happen. But here it is, Rejuam, in the rope, Bhujangama Iva, as if Iva, as if Bhujangama, snake is superimposed. So in that darkness, seeing a piece of rope, we are mistaking it as a snake. And for the time being, it is snake. The seer, he will do as if it is a real snake. He will step back. Oh, there's a snake. He will shout. And when he take, bring some uh, light with him, a lantern or a torch, and if he is ready to examine, then he will realize it is a piece of rock. It was not a snake. It is not a snake. It cannot be a snake. So in the past and in the present and uh, in the future, the rope is a rope. Never it is a snake. But still, when we do not know the real nature of uh, the rope, we will mistake it as something else. Here, snake. So it is an example of superimposition. And the superimposition comes as a result of uh, ignorance. So from ignorance comes superimposition. And uh, when it is superimposed, it is there. It is no more a snake. It is no more a rope. It is a snake. And when light dawned and he realized it is a rope, then there is no more snake. Snake has gone. In the same way, we are superimposing the whole phenomenal planes, whole universal existences to the existence absolute. And we are considering all these objects as real. Of course they are real because the reality behind them or the reality which is giving them existence is nothing but the existence absolute. So they are real. But when we are bound by ignorance,
we will take or we will assume the manifested plane as something real. And, and what is manifested will of course dissolve. And uh, when such a dissolution comes, we will cry and think, whole has gone. So we are considering all this, uh, all this universal existence as something coming and going. And because of that superimposition, because of that ignorance, we are not at all realizing the very base or very cause of uh, all phenomenal existences. So it is said here, just like a snake is superimposed on a piece of rock, the whole jagat, Asheshami, idam jagat, the whole jagat, the whole universe, is superimposed. on that absolute existence. That absolute reality, prataha namami, I am, I am prostrating prataha in the beginning, at the very outset, in the beginning. So, this is the this is the Pratasmarana Stotram having three shlokas. In the first shloka, Prataha Smarami, I am remembering. By the term remembering, it was meant I am contemplating or I am meditating on. And in the second shloka, it was prataha bhajami. In the very beginning, I am praising. And in the third shloka, it is prataha namami. In the beginning, I am, I am prostrating. I am doing namaskara. And here, the crux of uh, the whole narration is what is being manifested as myself and uh, what is responsible for uh, the activities of all my instruments. But really, that self is the Brahman without any limitation. The Brahman, which is the cause of, which is the, which is the ultimate reality behind the manifestation of all relative planes, or all existences, or all universal phenomena. So here, we are identifying ourselves with the supreme, the limitless, the full, the omnipotent and omnipresent. So this uh, knowledge or this identification, it naturally help us to get rid of uh, 
our own identification with uh, with uh, limited objects that is the body mind intellect complex and the things connected with that so the limitations which we had with it, or the feeling or the knowledge of limitation which we had with it and identifications accruing from that uh, from that identif uh, from that uh, that uh, limitedness as a matter of fact it vanishes and when it vanishes we are becoming what we are till now i was identifying myself with the limited objects body mind intellect complex and things connected with that like a name form and all now this realization has come i am not limited i am that purushottama my real nature is that from which all words are coming back the mind is coming back for words and mind cannot enter and which is full having no limitation that is my real nature when this realization comes there is no more samsara and in these three three shlokas we are seeing a deep contemplation of that reality and from that contemplation comes real knowledge and from that real knowledge we are getting rid of all our false identification with the limited objects and when those identification goes it is it is moksha moksha is not going to some other worlds moksha is not getting some other experiences moksha is realizing our own unlimited nature moksha is realizing our own sat chit and ananda so to have that here in these three shlokas a deep contemplation and uh, an everlasting meditation that is described and let us uh, let us ruminate this again and again and through shravana manana of this of this uh, prata smaranam all our doubts will go will vanish and we will be established in our own self which is uh, the self of all which is the cause of all which is un the unlimited being so that is this prata smarana stotram so if you have anything to ask without any hesitation you can ask and if i know the answer i will reply and we can conclude this prata smarana after this uh, this question answer session namaste 
today's first question is from uh, yoga jaya sri venudas ji venudas ji please mute and uh, not able to hear you namaste swami ji namaste namaste we would like to uh, have your guidance on ashta buddhi gunas please what is that i don't know ashta buddhi guna is shushrusha shravanam grahanam dharanam uham apoham ardha vijnanam tattva jnanam ah <laughs> So I am hearing for the first day. But all this can be explained. Okay. What was the first? Shushrusha. Yes. Shushrusha. Shravanam. Yes. Grahanam. Ah. Dharanam. Ah. uham a apoham a ardha vijnanam a tattva jnanam yes actually these are uh, these are eight steps or a stages through which our uh, intellect passes through or uh, we can say these are some stages through which a sadhaka has to pass through see in many prakaranas and many scriptures many many acharyas will explain the same thing in different languages so what differs is the mode of presentation or the mode of explanation the way in which acharyas are explaining it will vary so this are st- these are some stages some acharyas can uh, describe in another way and still another way can be accepted by some other 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 teachers so there is no hard and fast rule this we have to pass through such stages there is no hard and fast rule but at the same time when this uh, eight stages are there we can easily explain these are stages or phases through which a sadhaka is uh, is moving through or passing through the first is shushrusha shushrusha is shrodham icha eagerness to hear eagerness to hear e real yearning from within to hear shruti says the first step you have to undertake is shrotavya you have to hear to do that we must have that real yearning that that itching feeling from within or burning sensation within it won't allow you to sit idle it will propel you to pass through a cost for what for reaching or approaching a guru finding out a guru or finding out a place from where we can hear 
So that yearning, that uh, real thirst, that must be there within. And this is the first stage. Shishrusha, Shrodum Icha, real yearning to hear. And if that is there, somehow or other, some way or other, we will find out a teacher or a place from where we can hear. And to hear, we have to pass through some other stages like uh, Pranipatam, Seva, and the all. And then comes the second, uh, second phase of this uh, journey, that is Shravanam. Shravanam is we are hearing, hearing from the Guru. The teachings of uh, the Guru, teachings of the Shastras that we are hearing. So first there was the yearning, the thirst to hear, and now actual hearing happens. And uh, during that process of hearing, Simultaneously, our, uh, our intellect is working. It will pose uh, some queries and, of course, get answers either from within or from the Guru. And uh, it will take us to the third stage. Third phase, that is Grahana. Grahana. Grahana is state of uh, accepting. We are imbibing. Our intellect is accepting what is being taught. So that is Grahana. Normally, it happens simultaneously with the uh, Shravanam. But of course, it takes some uh, inner processes. That is, after Shravanam, there will be some, some inner process of uh, thinking, questioning, and getting answers. All this happens within. And we will digest what has been taught, what we have heard, that is Grahana. And uh, this happens in the intellectual plane. Along with that, or abreast with that, Chitta will work. Chitta will memorize. Chitta will take that which has uh, which has been digested and taken in, and it will store. So memorizing. It will happen. And that is dharanam. After grahanam, now it is dharanam. We are memorizing. And it is stored. So this process happens in the citta. And uh, then uha and apoha both works together. Even though it is stored within the chitta, mind is still working, 
and mind is uh, sankalpa vikalpatmaka by its nature it will go on questioning so it will analyze the pros and cons of uh, uh, what has been stored are different aspects of uh, what has been stored and uh, that process will go on with it. evaluation we will uh, we will think how again and again and uh, during that uh, mental process of uh, thinking of course intellect will come forward giving some some suggestions this can be this mind will again question and intellect will pose uh, an answer is it so yes this is the this is this is so that will happen with it and uh, during that process those parts which are uh, which are against uh, uh assimilation or or which are uh, remaining there within the mind obstructing real assimilation that have to be discarded that process also will happen so after dharanam it's a pure inner process that is happening in the stage of uh, discrimination and uh, contemplation and it is happening within and during that stage mind will pause many questions alternatives and intellect will give specific answers it will go on and on and finally discarding of uh, those aspects or those sides which are blocking real assimilation that will happen that that they will be discarded so in total we can take these stages all together and uh, it would mean uha and apoha first uha comes then apoha so in this stage of apoha we will uh, we will discard all those aspects which are blocking real assimilation assimilation of what assimilation of what has been taught all this will happen only when we are ready to uh, do manana if we are not at all doing manana it is a blind belief what guru has taught is absolutely right blindly we are uh, we are taking in and uh, just like uh, undigested food particles will create 
so many diseases. In the same way, those knowledge, those parts of knowledge, which are not properly digested and assimilated, will create so many inner problems. So this uha and apoha must happen. And these are purely inner stages. These are happening inside. And through that, we will, we will reach to a stage which we can call jnanam, knowledge. It is not ardha jnanam, but acharyas can term it so, ardha jnanam. But it is jnanam. It is jnanam. It is knowledge. Now it is knowledge. When uha and apoha happened, what we have inside, it is pure jnana. But still, it is only in the intellectual level. And uh, even now, it is the knowledge It is the knowledge which I have or I am knowing. So the knower is there, I, and the known is there, the knowledge, and the process of knowing also is there. And from where that knowledge came, of course, from my teacher, my guru, or my shastra, so Shastra, Guru, and myself, three entities are there. The knower, known, and the process of knowledge, three entities are there. Either way, we can take. And that also when goes. No such a differentiation of uh, the knowledge Knower and the known. That is, when I am knowing that without any doubt, and I am realizing that, and the very knowledge which has been uh, imparted by my guru, making use of shastras. Now it is uh, my own. It has become my own. Now it is not a second-hand knowledge. Now it is a part of my being. I am that. And that is myself. When that realization is there, it is a vijnanam, realization. It is realization. So, these are the stages through which a sadhaka passes through. But while studying these like things, we have to understand these are, these are some explanations given by samacharyas. So, some others can explain in some other ways. So, when we, when we go through different text, Vedanta text, we will, we will come across or we will find different explanations. So we have to assimilate all this and without any contradiction, we have to have a clear picture of these like explanations. I think it is clear. Sure, thank you. Namaste. 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 Next question is from Sri Pangapanji. Namaste, Swami. Namaste. Next question is from Tankapan. Are you hearing? I am not hearing. 
Sangapan sir, last week uh, you you were in the queue to ask a question. So you can unmute and ask the question now. We can't hear you. Sangapan sir is not hearing us. So, this question is from uh, Srihari Kofi Ji. I think uh, he didn't join today. So, uh, turn Arun Babu Ji. Arun Babu Ji. Yeah, uh, Namaste, Swamiji. Can you hear me? Namaste, Namaste. I'm hearing. Yeah. Uh, I just would like to have a clarification or doubt in the Adi Shankarajaya's philosophy of Vedanta. We always use the term Advaita or non-duality. Uh, so my doubt is, is there any specific reason why can't we straight away use Ekam? Why we need to say it is not true? See, Vedanta, as explained by Bhagavan Bhashyakara, Shankaracharya, and our tradition is Advaita. It is non-dualism. It is not monism. It is not the philosophy of one. It is the philosophy of non-dual. It is not uh, teaching one existence, but it is teaching non-dual existence. Why it is so? In the ultimate level, there is no difference between monism and non-dualism. In the ultimate level, there is no difference between the philosophy of oneness and the philosophy of non-dual existence. But in the, in the process of analysis or the, in the process of when, when, when we are analyzing, there is much difference. Because, as far as a student is concerned, there is the inquirer and the inquired. I am and the world around me, the microcosm and the macrocosm. Vyashti is there, the individual is there, and Samashti, the universe is there. And as long as the universe is there, there must be one who is controlling that, that is Ishwara. Student is there, teacher is there. So, as far as a sadhaka is concerned, we are in the, we are in the empirical plane. We are in the relative plane. We are not in the absolute. So I am the questioning being and I am approaching the Guru to get my questions cleared. And I am worshipping God, Ishwara. I am enjoying this world. So the, the, the plane of relativity is there. I cannot negate that. 
if the teacher is negating that, no, no, there is no empirical plane. Only the absolute reality, where there is no difference of me and you, that alone is there. If the teacher is teaching so, the student will not hear. Because this fellow is teaching something against my own experience. So, here the Acharya considers or take into account the level of the student and accepts, yes, dualism is there, Dvaita is there, you and me, teacher and student, Ishwara and Jiva. All, all manifestations which are in the dual plane, they are considered and accepted as they are. So there is Dvaita. So when Acharya accepts this Dvaita, the Shishya will sit with him. Shishya will get himself ready to hear the Acharya. Because he is accepting my play. He is understanding me. When that understanding is there, then only uh, transference of idea. That will happen. Then only there will be communion, communication. Otherwise, no communication will happen. And now, Acharya asked the student to analyze, take everything you feel as existing, you think as existing, and analyze what is giving existence to all these varied objects. And in that process of uh, analysis, Acharya will negate name, form, causation, time, space, and all such things. And finally, he will take the student to the reality which, are, which is above all these differences. And now what is there? Now the duality has gone. What is existing and what is shining is the non-dual existence. So this is the way of Bhagavan Bhashyakara. This is the way of uh, Vedanta. And uh, when this uh, when this final state of uh, realization has come, there is no dual world. No more duality is there. So, here in the first phase, we are accepting the world as it is. Then we are analyzing and finally we are reaching at the final truth, final reality, where there is nothing other than the existence absolute, knowledge absolute, and bliss absolute. Advaita Paramartho he. Then he will realize what is uh, really existing is Advaita. So that is why the philosophy is called Advaita philosophy, not, not monistic philosophy, but non dualistic philosophy. I think this is clear. 
Is it clear? Uh, yes, Swamiji, it's clear. Thank you for the very structured explanation. Thanks a lot. Namaste, namaste, namaste. Yeah, namaste. Next question is uh, from Sumanaji. Please unmute and ask. Namaste, Swamiji. Namaste, namaste. No, I have a very simple question, but uh, I want you to clarify some doubts that I have in it. Uh, can you explain Sat, Asat and Mithya? Sat is, Sat is the real, real existence. What is? I am saying I am here. And uh, this is a book. This world is existing. So in the empirical plane, I am considering all the all the manifestations as existing. So this is Satya. This is Satya. But when I examine more closely and uh, deeper, I am realizing what I am seeing around and what I am seeing as myself. All these are seen objects. And these are uh, coming and going, having birth and death. So in the, in, the, in the ultimate analysis, or when I observe from a higher plane, I'm realizing these are not real. Then what is the reality that gives uh, existence to all these manifestations? What was there? What is there? And what will be there? That existence absolute, that reality, real reality, that I call by the word Sat. The meaning of Sat is that which is. So in the first phase, Sat is what I am seeing around. And when I go still deeper into an analysis, I will realize Sat is what is giving existence to all. So this is the meaning of Sat. And if it is the case, what about the objects I have seen? What about you and me? What about this world and the other world? What about Ishwara and Jiva? If Sat is that existence absolute, what about all these things? Then I will realize these are these are just manifestations and these are only in the plane of such manifestations. That is all these are there only because of the very Existence absolute. When we are taking objects as something away from the existence absolute, they have no existence at all. When I say I am and you are, this world is, that existence absolute is giving existence to all. Other than that, these are only in the, in the 
relative plane, empirical plane. So that 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 is that is mithya. Having no absolute existence, but are being felt, seen, heard, or to use a more appropriate word, being experienced. So in the in the plane of experience they are. But when I analyze uh, going into deeper planes, they are not existing. That is mithya. Mithya. So the world is, or the uh, all the objects which I am I am experiencing here are in this plane. They are mithya. Not that they are not existing. Not that that is the absolute existence. They are being experienced by me. And in the ultimate analysis, I am realizing they are not existing by their own. They are only in the, in the manifested plane. So that is mithya. And as of this, that which is not. It was not there, it is not, and it will not be. That is asat. Vandhya putraha. It never can. That is asat. But there is no asat. We cannot say there is something uh, which can be called asat here. No, asat is non-existence. How non-existence can exist? Non-existence cannot exist. So asat is not there. Because asat is non-existence. Sat is existence. Existence absolute. So asat is not there. We cannot think about asat. We cannot discuss about asat. So asat is non-existence. So we are, uh, we are considering and discussing about these two things, Sat and Mithya, not about Asat. Asat cannot be discussed because it is nothingness and there is no nothingness. There is no nothingness. Always, everywhere, all the time, existence is there. And we cannot negate that existence. So nothingness is not there. Shunya is not there. So Shunyavada will not survive. Never it can survive. Shunyavada cannot survive. Because it is nothingness. How nothingness can uh, exist? So, there is no asat. There is sat. And on sat, so many mithya prateya, they are coming. And that is why this world is existing with all these relations, all these experiences. All these varieties. That is the answer. Namaste. Next question is from uh, Jaya Narendra Ji. Dr. Jaya Narendra Ji, please unmute and ask. 
Namaskaram Swamiji. Namaste, namaste. Uh, I think uh, the, the question what I had was about what you had explained just now. I think most of it was cleared. My question was um, this concept of superimposition that you discussed, is it as far as the only the individual is concerned or does it apply to the entire jagat? I think most of it you explained right now. Yeah. See, we are uh, we are living in this world, and uh, in this world we are sharing many things, and uh, we are. Uh, now here, as pruned by our past and the influence of our mother, father, the society, the teachers, all are there. All are responsible for this pruning. And uh, influence of uh, generations are there. That is, we are taking from, or we have taken from previous generations. And we are nurturing it. And we are uh, uh, passing it to the next generation. So there is, there is some commonness. In, in the process of cognition and accepting. So consider all these things, take all these things, and then we will realize that superimposition I am having as an individual, of course, I will have as a member of the society, because the cognition of the society is pruned or, to put in more uh, simple language, all these factors like uh, generations, that which has been transferred from generation to generation, and common features in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the process of cognition that we have accrued from our parents and teachers and the society, all these are responsible for that. So there are there are some common features and uh, therefore an individual cognition and uh, the cognition I am having as a part of the society both will have so many common features. I am I am showing my finger and saying this is one. And the student is learning, this is one. So this is one, and one is the first digit. See, if from the very beginning I taught the student, generation after generation taught the student, this is one. And this is two. Then showing this will, of course, give a message, this is one and this is two. If I am saying now all on a sudden, after coming to the dais, this is two and this is one, the whole society will call me a madman. He's a crazy one. 
But from the very beginning, if it wants the system, this is one and this is two. This will invariably convey the message of two and this is one. So in the same way, blue, black, yellow, green, all the colors, father, mother, all the relations, everything. So all this constitutes the society, the community, the collective, and that that is responsible for my present cognition. So the planes which are really superimposed, how I am cognizing in the same way every member of our society will cognize. Because the social psyche is something being pruned. So take into consideration this aspect. If the social system or social order would have been something else, the effect of this superimposition or the way uh, in which we will cognize the world, it would also have been entirely different. So consider this aspect also. I think uh, it is clear. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, I'm not sure we have time for one more question. Mm -hmm. So no, gonna... now it is eleven o'clock. I am in the in another work. Okay. Here, uh, they are, uh, the whole uh, team of Amrda TV people are here and they are recording. Okay. So I took took one and a half hour leave from them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now we can conclude. Okay. So Swamiji, there is a humble request. So today we are concluding Pradas Maranam. So next week. Uh, uh, we would like to continue with the uh, uh, Gayatri Mantra as the next subject of. Uh, <laughs> uh, hope it is fine, Sanjay. Yes. Thank you. Sanjay. So, you want this class to continue? Yes, yes. And there are. <laughs> 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 So we a uh, lot of people are benefiting in YouTube. We are able to easily upload just after the class, yeah. minimal editing. And, uh, so if it is benefiting, of course we can continue. Yeah, Pradesh Maranam, yeah. the first session has already close to thousand views now. Hmm. Thank you. So we can so conclude with the uh, yeah. So Ramayanam will start again in Amrita TV, Swamiji. Yeah, they are recording. Yeah. And uh, there is one more program uh, in the Santhya Deepam of uh, Amrita TV. Uh, they are going to start 10 minute session on well, uh, Adhyatma Ramayana and Kalipatu. That, that is in pure Malayalam mm -hmm. at 6 30 evening. Okay. And the other, other classes will continue. Okay. Yeah. Om Sahana Babatu Sahana Obhanaktu Sahaviryan Karabavahai Tejasri Navadhi Tamastu Mavitri Shavahai Om Shanti 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 Om